Hey guys, it's MJ the Student Actuary and this is CT5 chapter 14.2 and in this video we're going to be talking about selection. In the previous video we spoke about mortality, so check that one out if you haven't already. So, selection. What exactly is selection? Now, it's quite confusing because there are two different definitions for selection. So, the first one is selection is the process. <coughs> Sorry. Selection is the process of dividing a population into homogeneous groups so that the same stochastic model can be used for each one. Okay, Don't worry too much about what a stochastic model is now if you don't know. Um, just what you need to know is homogeneous means the same. It's, it's like a fancy Latin word for the same. And its opposite is hetero, heterogeneity, and that means uh, a mix. And that's what the second definition. <coughs> Sorry, the second definition of selection could refer to the source of the heterogeneity within a population, and it is the characteristic which is responsible for the differences in mortality. So, a very very easy example is to think of a population. Okay, and selection is when we just sort them according to their gender. So we get all the males and we get all the females. Why? Because we know that males have a heavier mortality than females. We could then go one step further. We could split them into their ages. We could then split them according to their smoking habits, etc., etc. And the more we split them up, the more homogenous the group becomes. However, the less data we get, which is bad for our little stochastic model. So. But don't worry about that, that's more of a CA1 question, uh, we have to apply judgment and, and all that type of stuff. For CT5, you just need to know the basics. And the big basics is, what are the types of selection? So, types of selections, I like to refer or remember the five types with this uh, acronym, CATS, and that is CLASS, ADVERSE, TEMPORARY, TIME, and SUPERIORS. Okay, so CLASS. Class is what we were talking about a little bit earlier. You know, your, your sex, your, you know, do you smoke? Um, what's interesting, it could also be your type of policy. So people with an assurance contract are going to have different mortality than people with an annuity contract. Annuity, you'd expect them to live longer. And assurance, you'd expect them to live a little less longer. Um, also, the method of sale. How was the product sold to them? This is the whole different distribution channel. Uh, was it sold in a newspaper or in a magazine or all those different types of things? Okay. Um, then there is adverse selection. Adverse selection is selection that leads to an adverse, which is an, a bad or a negative effect on another party. So the classic example is there's two life insurance companies. The one, um, you pay a 15 rand premium if you're a smoker and a 10 rand premium if you're not. And the other um, insurance company charges a 12 rand 50 premium for everyone. Okay, what's going to happen? Well, all the smokers are going to go buy their insurance from the second company. Why? Well, simply because it's cheaper. And in the first, um, the first company, they're getting penalized for being a smoker, whereas the second one, they aren't. Now, the second company assumes that 50% of the population is smokers. That's why they priced it like this. But the adverse selection happens in the sense that a whole bunch of smokers buy insurance from them and all the non-smokers, well, they'd rather go for the 10 Rand premium than the 12 Rand 50. So that's adverse um, selection. Uh, also, it could be if there's not enough underwriting, this can happen. And this is actually quite a serious issue in the insurance industry. Um, quite an interesting one is temporary selection. So what this says is, let's say you've got two people who are both aged 30. Okay, The one person, the first person, has had your policy for five years. And the second person has just bought the policy now. Who's got the lighter mortality? Well, temporary selection would say that the second person has the lighter mortality. Because they've just undergone the underwriting. So we've just done a whole medical on them. We know that they're healthy. The other 30-year-old, well, we knew that about him um, five years ago. That's why we allowed him to buy insurance from us. 
However, we don't do this medical um, underwriting regularly. So we don't know what's happened to that other person. Has his medical conditions changed? And what's, why we call it temporary is because in five years' time, when they're both 35, they'll both have the same mortality again. It's just the person, as he buys it, he's just gone through the healthy check and he's got this temporary initial selection. Okay, another type of selection is known as time selection. Okay, time selection is, is something that we, we're observing um, by just like looking at the calendar time. And that is people are living longer. Okay, so people 400 uh, years ago had much heavier mortalities than they do now. Uh, reason being, well, we've had a big um, increase in technology and medical advances, and we just, we're more aware of how to be healthy. So what time selection suggests is someone who's age 30 um, now has got a much lighter mortality than someone who's age 30 in the 16th century, um, given all other things the same. And this leads us to our last one, which is called superior selection. And this is when we incorrectly attribute um, a mortality change to a factor. And the classic example is, let's say we've got a life insurance company um, and it's been operating for 50 years. And a new CEO comes in and he changes the underwriting standards. And then they do a little test uh, a few years later and they see, wow, um, look how the mortality of our clients has um, reduced. This must be because of our underwriting standards. However, it was more likely that the decrease in mortality happened simply because of time selection. So it's a bit of a tricky one. You need to, in order to answer this type of question, you need to have a good knowledge of these other ones. And yeah, that's basically um, selection. In the exam, they'll either ask you to name all five of them or to just discuss one or to say what type of selection is happening in these mortality tables. And which is quite interesting because uh, one of the big questions asked in the past papers have been why do we use different mortality tables for different classes? Okay, so why, why do we use selection to split them up? And the whole thing is with the mortality table is you want it to be belong to a homogenous group. Because this way you can use it for any population. If you've got males and a population only has 10% males, then you can use this mortality table for just that 10%. However, if you had a, a heterogeneous um, mortality table, you could only use it in another population that has the exact same mixture as the one you based it on. So that just limits its use. And you don't want that because it takes a lot of time and effort to make these mortality tables. Um, decrements can have a select effect. So this is where you've got um, a product that pays out on death. And what you find is people who withdraw from the, from the product, they're more healthy because they're not assuming that they're going to die anytime soon. And what that does is it means the people who remain um, with the product have a much heavier mortality than what you expected because the lighter guys have all surrendered. Um, risk classification used in underwriting. So this is what I spoke about just a little bit in the beginning, how you can use different uh, questions to separate the group into, um, into homogenous groups. And finally, there are some limits of risk classification. Um, the big ones being that it costs to collect and process information. Think if you want to know someone's medical history, you have to take blood tests, it's going to take time, it's going to inconvenience the customer, all these type of things. Okay, Policyholder wants it to be quick and easy when they buy insurance. So there is just going to be a restricted number of rating factors and you have to make this compromise between your risk classification and your marketing. Because the less questions you ask in your form, the easier you can sell it. Um, it's better for the broker. And yeah, but you do want enough rating factors to avoid possible anti-selection or adverse selection. Anti-selection is just another word for it. And 
a lot of this will depend on what your competitors are doing. So if your competitors aren't asking a lot of questions, you're also going to not ask a lot of questions. Because remember back to our original example, the smoke is bought from um, company two because company one was charging a higher rate. If company one was also charging uh, 12 Rand 50, well then you wouldn't have to bother about the rating factor because then you'd get a mix. So it very much depends on what other companies are doing in the market. So you can see economics and game theory start creeping up into insurance as well. But yeah, that's all I'm going to talk about in this video. In the next one, I will be looking at standardization. And this is where you can score some quick and easy marks in the exam. So make sure you check it out. But yeah, I hope you guys are studying hard. Cheers.